welcome back to our business partner tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at setting up and managing cabinets, and this is the second part of that tutorial. So there was a first part, and this is the second. So if you come here, make sure you go back and watch the first one first. So here on this screen, we're looking at here is uh, where all of the information about cabinetry is entered, and we discussed that in the first one. I want to touch on a few points here mentioned as I covered the top about include top being toggle that turns it on or off and the same thing is true for the back and the deck but there's also a little math happening here we have for adjustable shelves and fixed shelves you're telling us the number of shelves for the cabinet and then the difference in the depth of that shelf so if the cabinet is 24 inch deep how much shallower is the shelf than the cabinet and so that helps us calculate the square footage of materials more accurately. A couple other things here in the back nailer you can have a quantity of of two or three or you know if you have more than one we don't have that option for most of these parts but in that particular case some people like to have a back or, or a nailer at the top and at the bottom of their base cabinets and this is also relevant to wall cabinets. And then include back. There are some cabinets in the case of a true 32 cabinet that we would not include a cabinet. An example of that would be a, a three drawer stack. We just don't put a back in that cabinet. But you could if you wanted to. And here you can include or exclude the back. Also to subtract the nailer width from the back height. Some people do that, some people don't. We subtracted at True32 Custom Cabinetry of Middle Tennessee, we subtracted the back height by the width of the nailer so that on base cabinets we could get two rips out of a single sheet of plywood or melamine. But So that covers this portion of the cabinet setup. Now I'd like to go to the door specifications and give you some basic information there. So since this is a base cabinet there are zero upper cabinets now this field would have already been populated if you filled it in here but it's it could go either way you could fill in from this interview process down here or you could fill in here and it would self populate here so it could go either way whichever way makes the most sense for you but this is reflecting the number of doors that this base cabinet has on it this again would be populated from the answer here and if this had been an upper cabinet there would have been an answer here typically that's about 54 inches and so if it were a, an upper cabinet, you'd see some other additional math here. But since this is a, a base cabinet, the, the cabinet height and the floor to top of cabinet are one and the same. We enter the toe kick here and we do some math to calculate in panel heights. And then also the primary point of this page is to enter this number here. What's the space between a pair of doors so that we can subtract that off of the doors? And you see that math happening here. If for some reason you want to be more specific, you can actually come in here and override the upper door height and the base door height if you wanted to. There are several cases you might want to do that. I really personally would not want to track projects where we have the door overhanging the light rail. That's just not enough square footage to matter to me, but you could do that here if you needed to. So now let's go to the metal drawer system. This is something you, you really need to understand well, especially in relationship to pricing. This is not an either or option here, metal drawer versus five parts. So the metal drawers typically are two parts and the five part drawer system would be your wooden drawer boxes, whether they be built from solid wood or melamine or or different materials but in this case it is one or the other it's not either or so if you answer the questions here if you answer for five pieces then you're going to get five answers here even though you're not going to see them if you answer for the three pieces when you come here as you see here you're only going to see the three answers so you have several options here one is to have a cabinet that is specific to a five-piece drawer and a cabinet that's specific to a metal drawer or a system drawer that only has two parts that are cut. I've chosen not to do that because we really could not duplicate all of the various pricing methods that the drawer, the outsourced drawer companies provide anyway or all of the different methodologies that cabinet makers choose to provide or utilize so we chose that we would have one pricing system on the drawers and then how I work around this for the the jobs that have five piece drawers as opposed to the metal drawer is that I have zeroed out the material for the five piece drawer 
So the cost of that material in the material library is zero. So there's no material cost calculated. And then I have a per drawer cost that is an average of what it cost me to purchase a dovetail drawer. And I, I didn't make dovetail drawers when I was in the cabinet business. I did early on, but later I didn't. I just outsourced all of them. But even if you make them, you, you probably would be better served to base your price on an outsource cost and then just make sure when you are manufacturing them that you can manufacture them for something less than that outsourced cost. If you can't, you should outsource them all the time anyway. But if you can, just make a little extra money when you choose to outsource them in the times when you have the time to, to produce drawers in-house. So you, you have to pick one or the other. If you never build a two-piece drawer or a system drawer, just answer the questions under the five-part drawer box. You know, answer all five questions, and then you can use the material cost if you want to. But if you do both, I suggest you set up the metal drawer system like you would like it, and then zero out the material cost for wooden drawers and use the per drawer cost. What I did personally was I took 10 jobs that we had purchased drawers from Conestoga and divided the total cost of those 10 jobs by the number of drawers. I think at the time it came up to be somewhere between $40 and $50 and that's what we entered our cost for drawers into the accessories library and then I would choose or into the drawer uh, cost and so when we chose a wooden drawer, business partner would charge whatever that was plus all of our markups. So it was a very effective way to offer both metal drawer systems or two-piece system drawers and five-part drawer boxes. The next thing is trays, and trays are the same song, second verse. Trays work exactly like drawers. If you answer the questions here, you're going to get three answers here, even though there's five uh, or four in this case, because we don't have the subfront. But in trays, I used accessories. So you see mine are zeroed out. You could answer all these questions here and get a cost, but I used an accessory for trays so that they would show individually on the estimates and proposals so the client could see what they were getting, how many they were getting, rather than have to, to have five part trays or the metal trays included in the cabinet cost and them not have any idea what the cost of those trays were it eliminated a lot of questions eliminated a lot of phone calls by having a line item that said pull out trays in how many and if so if it said there were four of them and the cost was four hundred dollars then they knew they were a hundred dollars each and they knew if they wanted six that it would be six hundred and if they wanted two it'd be two hundred so it eliminated any questions about trays but you could again include them in the cost and then include them in the cabinet and it would include them in the cost of the cabinet but they wouldn't be something that the client would see a single line item representing those trays so they wouldn't know the exact cost of the tray but you can do it either way whichever you prefer face frame specifications as you see here I'm on a full access cabinet so there's nothing here about the face frames but I could potentially have a, fa a frameless cabinet that I'm going to add a subframe to so I could answer these questions here and get that frame just as well as in, in a face frame cabinet and we just base it off the number of openings and you'll see here if I click on one that I get and this drawing is irrelevant uh, it, it's just here for reference only it's not to be accurate in any way it's just saying that this is going to have a top rail a bottom rail and a left style and a right style if we go to two openings again the configuration is irrelevant it's just saying you know they're giving you an idea of how many parts are involved and allowing you to set the widths of the styles and rails to, to cost them appropriately the three four and five are just equally divided spaces but we're just looking for the right number of parts and the right size of parts so that we can calculate the cost of face frames. So that's everything in this second part for cabinet setup. I hope that was beneficial to those that are currently using it and for anyone who is not using Business Partner now and was just watching these videos out of curiosity, hopefully that was educational and uh, will tip you over the edge and you'll order the Business Partner any day now. Thanks for watching.